and I just wanted to do something that didn't incorporate math and that I always could talk like I did a speech from memory at four years old for an hour on Frederick Douglass. At four. Like, so I didn't always had that gift, but I just, it just was never nurtured because for whatever reason. So when I graduated from college with a mass communications degree, mine in sociology, I was going to be making $7.10 an hour entry level at a job, which is, you know, not, kind of defeats the purpose of having a college degree. I could have made that. I was making more than that in high school working at a shoe store. So I said, if I'm going to be broke and struggling, I'd rather be poor and struggling, building my own legacy and helping somebody else continue to build their legacy. So I jumped in the car. I've always been interested in comedy. I always loved comedy. I watched it growing up. It was a big part of my interaction with the people that I looked up to in my life. And I always told, was always told to do it because I was always funny. So when I got into the game, I just said, fuck it, I'm going to do it. Four minutes on stage. I got on stage August 23rd, 2008. Did the show and been doing it ever since. It was crazy because I did a show for Nick in 2010, right? Yeah. Called The Fresh Faces of Comedy. My homegirl, Dolly, who uh, worked with Nick, was his assistant with the college with me. So he was doing his Fresh Faces of Comedy show. I was two years in the comedy at this time. And uh, she was like, yeah, you know what I mean? Nick wants you to come up and do the show. So when I went up to the comedy club, it was at Gotham, which is in New York City, the mecca of stand-up comedy for real as far as the, the, the level of greatness that you have to display to be able to perform there and what it builds in you. So I get to the comedy club and the dude who's there tells me, hey man, I don't know you, so you can't curse, can't say the N word, can't talk about anything raunchy or derogatory. Right. Let's see if you're really funny. Well, that, why does it matter if you, if you knew you? Because he didn't know if I was funny or not. Oh, I so I, didn't, I hadn't built up any seniority to be able to just get on stage and lean on crutches that most people can lean on. You know, dick, pussy, and nigga. Right, 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 right. right. That's, it's really easy to dress that up as funny because it's like, it's controversial. Gotcha, gotcha. So he's like, nah. Take I'm gonna make sure you know if you're funny. Right. And I'm gonna see if you're really funny. So I was like, shit. So I didn't have a set anymore because at that point, that's all I was talking about. Right, right, right. So my creative process is I walk around, talk to myself. That's how I get shit together. So I was outside walking around talking to myself and Nick pulled up and seen me. So I'm sure he just, now I know he thought I was just some crazy nigga outside <laughs> talking to myself in New York. Right. So when I uh, did my show, I just really talked about what happened to me that day. I talked about having to ride the bus from the airport. Right. I talked about uh, uh, what was going on, um, Occupy Wall Street was going on at the time. I yeah. talked about that and my set was just really you could tell that it was genuinely done then. I was talking about in the moment, right then. Right. At the biggest show that I had ever done up until that point. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I'm two years in a comedy. I'm in Gotham Comedy Club, performing on the show with all these dudes with big names. They're recording it as Nick Cannon. And now I got to do a set based off of just something that I'm making up right then. And so I smashed, killed. When I got off stage, Nick pulled me to the side and was like, yo, did was you just making that up just now when I walked past you outside? And I'm like, yeah. He was like, yo, man, I'm going to keep it real with you. I'm around some of the best in the game, daily, legends. And they cannot do what you just did. Keep working. Man. That's special. So fast forward two years later, I'm still doing my comedy. I'm still grinding, working a little job to pay my bills and shit, take care of my family. I found out I'm getting laid off of my job. I was working social work, uh, working with people with mental disabilities and substance abuse issues. I found out I'm getting laid off from the job in November when they uh, when the recession hit real bad and uh, they was doing budget cuts. Right. So I'm panicking. I'm like, what the fuck am I gonna do? I'm not making no money off comedy, for real. You know, I'm, I'm not gonna be able to, I got a daughter now. My daughter's, you know, one years old, about to be one years old. And I'm like, man, what am I gonna do? So I find out, I'm on Twitter one day and I see Nick was like, yo, Whoever's the funniest people on the internet, tweet them and I give them an audition for Wild and Out. So I'm like, oh shit, they bring a Wild and Out back. And just my natural character, who I've always been my whole life, just fits into the scope of that show. I'm that nigga walking around making up songs, being goofy and shit. I've been doing right. that shit my whole life. Right. So I was like, yo, this is a great opportunity. Right. Georgia 36. So I hit my I hit Dolly and I'm like, yo, is is Nick is this real? Is he really bringing Wild and Out back? She was like, yes, that's he's consumed with it now. What's happening? So I'm like, man, whatever I gotta do to get a shot, to get an audition, let me know. So 
the way God worked, Nick ended up coming through Charlotte because he got from Charlotte, North Carolina, because he got family down there. So he like he was gonna do an audition in Charlotte. So I was like, cool, that's cool. We're gonna go to the audition. Me and my boy B that went to the audition in my in my 2003 Saturn View with 212,000 <laughs> miles on it at that time. Right. Went down there, I did the audition. Mind you, there was hundreds of people there, man. And you know, I remember that my first interaction with Nick was that show. Right, right, right. And what he respected about what I did. Right. So I'm like, even if he don't remember, I'm gonna make him remember me because I'm gonna do the same thing. Right. So I walked around the building, got my shit together that I was gonna do. Walked into the room and my homeboy, my OG Dorian now, who is family now, so crazy, was sitting in there. And I was probably like the 30th person to go. And he was sitting in there just stone faced. Stunning big black Nick, just stone mean looking motherfucker. Uh -huh. So that's who I said, him. That's my goal. I got to make him laugh. Right. So Nick was like, man, you know, you can get warmed up, do a little stand up if you want to. So I was like, cool, that's cool, man. I do a little stand up, man. First of all, uh, thanks for the opportunity, but I'm gonna go ahead and keep it 100, man. I don't know if this is uh, as great of an opportunity as I thought it was. I, <laughs> you know, I thought the job would be uh, a little bit more um, intricate in uh, picking the people. Yeah. When I walked up and seen the line of people auditioning, I didn't know if it was an audition or we was handing out turkeys out this motherfucker. Like, it just didn't seem like the type of people that I would be having. And then Dorian dies laughing. Right. And then I get into my shit. Uh -huh. And then I kill that audition. So Nick tells me after I finished, he was like, yo, I remember you from the show, you know, that we did in New York. So if you want to, I'll give you an opportunity to come to the real audition. Because this was just something he was doing as a one-off. Right, right, right. So, he like, you can come to the real audition, but you got to fly yourself to New York to get up there or get to New York on your own. But if you can get up there, I give you an audition in front of the execs and stuff. So I'm like, man, let me know. So, I found out the audition. Mind you, I found out I'm getting laid off in November. This is the first Wednesday in December. The end of November, I found out I was getting laid off. Right. The first audition in Charlotte was the first Wednesday in December. Second Wednesday in December, I go up to New York and do the real audition that they was having with the people that I thought I was gonna see in Charlotte. Like all of the, the internet people and the other comedians that I knew about and all of that. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's a bunch of people there. I won't say no names because a lot of them didn't make the show, but you know what I mean? It was a lot of people there. So I went and did that audition. And what made me stand apart in that audition, they was like, you gotta do some impressions. So I did an impression of Uncle Ruckus. Ah. And I was like, Nick Cannon. You know why I love you so much, Nick Cannon? Like wow, like cause niggas don't. And, <laughs> and after that, that got me to the next audition, right. which was the audition, the group audition right. that we all did together. Myself, Carlos, Emmanuel, Conceited. Uh, who else was in there? Uh, Jacob. Bunch of people that ended up making that first run. Was that we your did first the time meeting Carlos and no, all? no. But that's the thing. Me and Carlos knew each other. Years, met each other years prior. He came to my alma mater, Winston Seven State, and we did a comedy show together gotcha, okay. years prior. He okay, came with cool. Zoo Man Miller. Cool. So we knew each other. So when we got there, we was like, oh shit, you know what I'm saying? We gotta make this shit shake. Right. So did that audition, killed that audition. Mind you, this is the third Wednesday of December. Final Wednesday of December, now Evans calls me from an 818 number. I didn't answer it the first time because I thought it was a bill collector. Right. Because I owed a lot of bills at that time. Yeah. So I was like, fuck that. Then I he called back again. So I asked him. I'm like, hello? He's like, yeah, this is now Evans from uh, MTV's Wildin' Out. I'm like, oh, man, what's good? He was like, oh, yeah, don't act relieved now because you know I ain't a bill collector. I'm like, I'm relieved that you know that I thought you was a bill collector. <laughs> so he was like, yeah, man, we just want to let you know, you know what I'm saying, that, uh, you know, uh, we reviewed everything and we just want to say that you have uh, made it and we want to welcome you to the cast of uh, season five of Wildin' Out. This was the final Wednesday of December. Right. I, that's how crazy how God worked. I got laid off officially January 11th, I believe it was, 2013. That was a Friday. That Monday, I flew out to shoot Wild Enough. 